Hello everyone. Let's continue into looking different sources of variation. So the second source of variation is the oxide thickness. So let's begin with an inverter itself because this is a very good example to look into to look into each and every attribute of a MOSFET. So when you expand this particular inverter, you'll have a PMOS and NMOS as we explained in the previous video. And when you try to open up any one, one of the transistors, you'll see something like this. We are looking in, now into the cross-sectional view of the transistors. Initially, we saw the layout of the transistor. Now we are looking into the cross-sectional view. That is this, that is a transistor. So you have this gate oxide over here. You have the polysilicon metal, polysilicon or the metal gate. You have the P-type substrate. You have the uh, source terminal or this uh, and the N plus diffusion area. You have the uh, N plus diffusion area and the drain terminal. So this is what a MOSFET looks like. And over, over here that you see that is the gate oxide. So we are talking about an oxide thickness variation over here. So let's see what does what does that exactly mean. Okay, so before that, if you look into an inverter chain, again repeat, uh, repeating the same thing that we that we looked in the last video, that that a, repeat, a ch uh, inverter chain will look something like this with uh, with uh, with a flop or a flop which is present over here, or it could be a clock to clock pin of the D flip flop and so on. So chain of inverters, the layout will look something like this. So what we'll do is we'll take one of the transistor. Basically, the, let's let's take this. PMOS transistor and let's look into the uh, cross-sectional view of it okay so we have this transistor and we have uh, this particular uh, cross-sectional view of the transistor so when you when you cut the transistor in the in this particular fashion this is what you see so just imagine just imagine try cutting uh, cutting this particular uh, transistor from this point so and and try viewing it from this this uh, from this side so what you will see is you will see a polysilicon polysilicon gate which is this one you will see an oxide beneath it which is this one and you will see the diffusion area out of which which one is the source and one is the drain which is this is the source and this is the drain okay so this is how your how your transistors looks like so we are looking into the gate oxide so in an ideal scenario in an ideal case the gate oxide will look something like this in an ideal oxidation process the gate oxide thickness will be constant throughout the channel okay that's what is expected from an ideal oxidation process but the ideal oxidation process for, for an ideal oxidation process to happen things should be ideal the things around in the fab should be ideal and that's not exactly the case so we are looking into a real oxidation process so there's a typo over here we are actually looking into the real oxidation process in that real oxidation process if you see the the uh, the oxide thickness is not constant along along the gate length it's it's very disturbing it is i've shown the the worst case it could be it could be better than that but i'm just showing you the worst case that the oxide thickness is not very constant whereas it is expected to be constant across the complete channel length okay and this is what you see in a real oxidation process so what can go wrong because of this and first of all this is we are looking into an uh, a variation in the oxide thickness for a uh, one transistor of a single inverter similarly you will have so many transistors you will have a pool of transistors out of which each and every transistor will show you this particular oxide thickness variation to some extent basically uh, the oxide thickness variation that you see let's say for this transistor will be very different from the oxide thickness that you see for example let's say for this transistor so sim and and that too and and the uh, the oxide thickness variation for this transistor and this transistor should be equal but there will be still some variations okay so this is this variation is there all across your transistors and again as we said since the middle transistors are are accompanied by another transistors or middle inverters are accompanied by another inverters so there will be very less variation seen over here there will be a variation but it will be a minimal whereas if you see the variation for the gates or the transistor which are sitting at the sides there will be much more variations as they are exposed to other structures as well okay so this is what you see now in this current equation here yeah, the id is equal to mu c ox w by l if you look into the oxide capacitance which is cox that's a dependent on the oxide thickness and so this is how your drain current directly impacts that directly gets impacted from the oxide thickness so more so, so the more the oxide thickness variation more is the id variation and now the next part is to look into how this id is going to vary your propagation delay okay 
so this is the variation that you see the oxide thickness do vary so uh, so we found two terms till now we found the term w by l ratio that more that can tune your drain current and we found the oxide thickness that can that, that can tune the drain current so we have two two equations over here sorry we have two parameters over here that can actually tune the drain current now our last job is to find out uh, the relationship between the drain current and the delay of the cell so let's look into the propagation delay of an inverter cell it's very simple so if you had this inverter if you give this particular thing as an input so when at this particular point when your input is at logic zero your pmos is on your nmos is off and and during and during this stage this can be safely replaced by a resistor because this is on so pmos can be safely replaced by a resistor and since this is off this can be safely replaced by an open switch okay and the output that you see over here is a charging capacitance and the capacitance that shows a waveform something like this so basically there is a f amount of current that flows through this resistor into this capacitance and and that is this is what you see at the output of your capacitance so now the the thing that we have to relate is we have to relate this particular current and this is the drain current that we are talking about so we have to somehow relate this drain current with this with the with the delay of the cell let's let's look into how do we do that so one thing to notice over here is the RC network that is present. If you take a close look at the RC network and bring it over here, bring bring this RC network over here, you see the voltage at the output of the capacitance somehow resembles re resembles this one. So if you draw the voltage across the output of the capacitor, it resembles the rising rising cap, uh, rising logic from logic zero to logic one. Okay, so basically, and what and and this particular rising and the, uh, the discharging and charging of the capacitor depends upon how much amount of current this supply is able to is is able to provide to the capacitance. So so whenever this during this kind of circuit, the supply voltage transfers some amount of charge onto this particular capacitance, and that's basically called as the drain current in in the in an inverter uh, in an inverter sense. It's called the drain current. Okay, and now when you see uh, when you that that's why when you feed an input which is something like this, you get an output which is something like this. So now the only thing that we have to play with along is this particular resistor. So from the drain current, we have to find out a relationship between this drain current and the resistor. Okay, because the propagation delay now it seems to be a function of the resistance, a strong function of the resistance. It's also a function of the capacitance, but in this case we will look into how it is a function of resistance. So what we'll do is, uh, since uh, this uh, topic will need some more amount of discussion between how the current is dependent on the resistance and all those things, let's try to bring it up in the in in the next video and and also in the next video we will look we'll finally conclude that how does the drain current becomes a function of the resistance and then how eventually things change and how the variation that we talked just that we talked about in the previous previous videos how does that directly affects the propagation delay. So let's try to continue all this in the next video. Thank you.